Hey guys, it's Will from LearnRater, and in this edition of AP Micro Mondays, we're going to be walking through positive externalities. So when you tackle positive externalities on the AP Micro exam, what you want to think about is what exactly a positive externality is. Well, to think about this, you want to think about a situation in which a third party derives some sort of additional benefit from an economic transaction. So for example, if you were to bike to work as opposed to driving a car to work, you would be imposing a private benefit in the sense that you'd be doing a very healthy choice of, in terms of your mode of transportation, but you'd also be doing society a benefit as well because you'd be reducing the overall societal use of fossil fuels. Another example would be if you were to get a college education. In that case, you would be getting a private benefit of all the wage increases that result from getting a private education, but on a overall societal benefit, society has a more valuable worker because presumably you've acquired human capital skills from your time in college. So when you think about these positive externalities, you want to think about a situation in which there's some sort of external benefit that wasn't initially thought about um, in the context of an economic transaction. So now let's think about it in the context of a graph. So a positive externality, you know, you have an overall marginal social cost. And so your marginal social cost is just going to be this upward sloping line. And the reason why is because, as you can imagine, as you know, you increase your overall um, you know, price, there's going to be a higher marginal social cost when you get to a point of congestion or something along those lines as you go farther to the right in terms of your overall quantity. So more quantity of something, you know, and you have a higher price, there's a higher marginal social cost associated with it. But then let's think about the marginal private benefits. So your marginal private benefit might look something like this. So in this case, your marginal private benefit represents your demand, your personal demand, because this is essentially what you derive from, you know, personally riding your bike to work. But the other thing to consider are these extra benefits that society gets from you riding your bike. So in this case, there's a marginal social benefit that's to the right of your marginal private benefit. And so these are what are known as spillover effects. A positive externality is the same as a spillover effect and it's a positive spillover effect because essentially what's happening is because you're riding your bicycle society is deriving an additional benefit because of that reduced amount of fossil fuel usage so let's look at this and let's look at where the intersections occur in respect to the graph so we want to look at where marginal private benefit intersects marginal social cost and that happens right here so let's go ahead and draw that across and then what we see is we can mark these as Q0 and P0. And then what we also can see is we can actually mark where P1 and Q1 are. So let's go ahead and do that. And so as you can see from a positive externality, we have an overall upward shift in price as well as a rightward shift in quantity. So we've moved outwards with respect to our overall equilibrium. So what happens with this positive externality is there's actually a dead weight loss associated with it because because we're not accounting for this positive externality, there's a certain amount of surplus that we're not accounting for. So we can look at where the original marginal private benefit intersected the marginal social cost and then go up in terms of the marginal social benefit to consider where it actually should have been. So in this case, it would be here. And therefore, what that tells us is that this is the dead weight loss from this positive externality. So you may be asking yourself, you know, okay, so we have this dead weight loss. How do we fix this? How do we, you know, shift our overall demand curve outward to meet that marginal social benefit curve? Well, the way to do that is a lot of governments will choose to subsidize. So if they choose to subsidize people that might be purchasing bikes in order to Trans, trans to go to work, then they might provide a subsidy in which, you know, if you go to work riding your bicycle, you get a certain amount off of the bicycle purchase. So this might be a way to incentivize people to switch from using cars to riding a bike to work instead. So the most common form of resolving this deadweight loss from the positive externality is to go ahead and subsidize. So let's go over this once again, 
just to make sure you get the core point. With a positive externality, you have a marginal social benefit that's greater than your marginal social cost. And so in this case of the equilibrium, as we see here, your marginal social benefit, and I'll change this to blue, your marginal social benefit is greater than your marginal social cost at this point. And therefore, as a result of this, we have a spillover effect, and then we have this deadweight loss that occurs. And so in order to resolve this deadweight loss, what a government would do is they would consider subsidizing this overall externality so that they could shift this marginal private benefit to mirror more of what the marginal social benefit is. So that pretty much covers it for positive externalities, and in another week we're going to cover negative externalities.